Hey there everybody, it's Kevin Esty from Stamping Just for Fun. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator located on the east coast of Canada in Nova Scotia, Upper Tantallon, which is near Peggy's Cove. And today I'm doing my Gentleman Crafters uh, June Blog Hop uh, post. And in this video we're going to play with the new Jar of Flowers stamp set and the uh, Flowers for Every Season uh, suite. Um, we're going to do three cards. I've got four shown here because I just wanted to show two different versions of the one with the uh, the little shaker domes in them. They're quite fun. Um, and there may be some other samples that I do later on and post as extra pictures in the gallery on this blog post at my stampingjustforfun.ca uh, website. I'm having a lot of fun with this uh, suite. Uh, I was drawn to it right away when I first saw it and... Uh, Thought it would be a good one to uh, to try to do some cards. So we're going to do three cards today. Um, this stamp set is all imagery. Uh, there are a couple of reversible layers in it, but there are no sentiments. So um, it's going to look like I'm pulled out the whole entire craft shop here in order to do these cards, but it's really not quite like that. Um, you can use practically anything uh, with this stamp set. So just other things that I had on hand. Um, I did get the new Lovely You uh, bundle that comes with this wonderful new uh, six-way punch for punching tags, and so we're going to use that to make a tag on one of the cards. Um, I like just love the fonts in this uh, stamp set, so we're going to use the uh, a couple of these on this card. You'll see I used the smile and inside uh, I used one from So Sentimental. Just showing you the versatility of stamps that you may already have. Uh, another card is going to use um, one of the host stamp sets that we had uh, from the last mini catalog. Um, again, I like the small little sentiments that are in here, so I think I used um, It's the Little Things. And another good stamp set that's full of great sentiments to use on cards when you have a set like this that doesn't have any sentiments is from the Peaceful Poppies set, and that's the Peaceful Moments. There are sentiments here for just about everything you can think of, uh, very similar to the So Sentimental. There are sentiments here for every possible combination of things uh, that you might want to make a card for. So that's what we're going to use today. And for this first card, I'm just going to get my notes off the back here. I've started making my notes in uh, both metric and British, or whatever we call it, imperial, just uh, because there are people in Canada following me here who do everything by centimeter. And uh, so I'm giving all my dimensions and everything in both now. Um, there's going to be a lot of stuff coming to the screen here in a second. Just bear with me. It looks like a lot, but it's not... Not really. Okay. We need a card base of ex espresso. I always call it ex espresso. <clears throat> uh, espresso, and that is eight and a half by five and a half, scored in the middle at the four and a quarter. This would be 21.6 centimeters by 14 centimeters. We're going to have a white matte layer for the front that we're going to do our stamping on. And that one is three and a half inches by four and three quarter, or 8.9 centimeters by 12 centimeters. Inside card mat uh, is pretty standard. This one's a little smaller. I wanted some of that espresso color to show on the front, so that's cut a little smaller than normal. This one is cut um, a quarter of an inch smaller than the overall card area, so it's four by five and a quarter, or 10.2 by 13.4 centimeters. Okay, so we have those pieces. Then we just need a little, uh, oh, I guess I got lots of extra here. Um, these are just some of the little half inch strips that when you're cutting up your uh, mat pieces, you always end up with these half inch strips off the end. I always keep those in a little jar. These are great for making little uh, sentiment strips. So that's what we're gonna put the smile on. Really only need one. And then I uh, went to my ribbon row and I found some of this really nice, um, it's not copper, I think it was bronze ribbon and it's metal, it's metallic and it's woven and you can pull it apart and stretch it and so forth and I thought that would be kind of cool because it's got a little bit of shimmer to it and it goes really well with the espresso. 
And in my stash, I had a little container of sequins that were, um, there's black, there's brown, there's gold, there's copper, there's bronze, there's everything in there. And that's not a Stampin' Up! product. That was just something I happened to have lots of, and I thought that went really well with the brown as well. We are going to use Early Espresso ink to stamp sentiments, and we are going to use Memento Black to stamp the uh, flowers and color them in. And if you're looking at my blog post, you're going to see <clears throat> I'm using my blends and I'm using a huge variety of colors, but you use what you have. These stamps, this stamp set is all about coloring. And you can watercolor, you can use aqua painters, you can use watercolor pencils, you can, uh, you can use anything you want to use to do your coloring. Um, it looks great any way you want to do it, but for the sake of speed, I'm going to do um, blends because I find I can just speed through with those. They work so well. They're very forgiving, and I don't have to get involved in a lot of water. So I've folded my card base. Just going to set that aside. We're going to do our stamping. I have the stems that go in the jar. <laughs> my blocks are all stuck together. I have the jar, and I have... Um, I think they're peonies. There's, there's a variety of flowers in there. Uh, it's, it's a really interesting stamp set. Um, there's lots of variety in the flowers that go in this, this jar. So we're just going to ink that up with regular memento. If you were watercoloring, you would want to use the Stazon ink so that it doesn't bleed when it gets wet. You could even cut this front matte piece uh, out of watercolor paper if you're more comfortable with that and color on your watercolor paper. I'm going to pull in my stamp and pierce mat here. Oh, and the first thing I did was get ink on my fingers. Okay. And you could use your watercolor paper to do your true watercoloring on. And I'm just going to put that sort of in the middle like that. Again, this is a very forgiving stamp set. If, by perchance, you don't happen to get it really well inked in one spot, it doesn't matter. Because um, you're going to be coloring everything in. And then we need the jar. The jar just goes... I'm actually going to put it over the flowers a little bit, because... I could have masked, I suppose, and, and made it so that the flowers came down over the front of the jar, but I'm going to be putting that ribbon on there. You're not going to see right in the middle, so it's not going to matter. And then we need the little stemmy things. And you know what? <clears throat> I'm not going to do those in black. I'm going to bring in my old olive, because they're going to be colored in. I think I realized that when I was making this one up because I can see there that that's old olive. And this is just going to overlap again the middle part where the ribbon's going to go because it's going to hide it. And the ribbon's going to go there and cover where all these little overlap bits are. Okay. While we're stamping, I'm going to stamp my little sentiment piece here too. I'm using Early Espresso. I'm just going to set that off to the side for a second. And I'm using the little smile from the... Huh, I want to get the right names here. From the Lovely You stamp set. Right, there's my little smile. He's done. We'll put him aside. And on my inside mat, I use the Your Friendship is a Blessing, and that comes from the So Sentimental set. Again, you use whatever sentiments, stamps that you have that you like. These jars of flowers are good for friendship, birthdays, 
um, they actually really work well for um, any kind of a, a, you know sending healing hugs uh, best wishes uh, any anywhere where you would send flowers to somebody get well um, just lends itself to all those different ones. Okay, so we've got our stamping done. All our pieces here. Now we're going to do some quick coloring. So, I'm going to bring in my colors. Like I say, I've got quite a palette here, but you use what you have. And I only... I'm going to sit to do this. I only chose these colors because they reminded me of flowers and things that I have seen at the store and on displays and whatnot. So, I'm using Pretty Peacock, and I'm just doing these two sets of, I don't know what you call them, um, they're kind of like little round uh, baubles, and I've seen them in lots of different odd, dark green and blue colors. I think they're dyed that way in the, in the store in the floral department. So that was that. And then I'm going to go to... Uh, this is Lovely Lipstick, and I'm going to do these little berries up here in Lovely Lipstick. Uh, and then I've got uh, Pumpkin Pie, and I'm going to do these other little berry-type flowers up here in Pumpkin Pie. There we go. Then I've got my Old Olive, and I'm going to do my stems down here in the water. And this is actually quite forgiving down here, too. There are a lot of lines, and it's kind of hard to follow when you get up in the middle which one is the stem and which one is the in-between the, the stem, because they kind of go all over the place, but it doesn't matter. There's so many little green lines up there. Um, you just kind of fill it all in. Uh, we're going to put water over it anyway. Not real water, we're going to color water, but so it won't matter as long as you get some green in there. There you go. And I'm also going to do these three sets of leaves. Now, if you're a really proficient color colorer with your blends and you want to bring in both the dark and the light, give 3D texture and whatnot to all of this, you can. I don't often do that. Um, there's so much going on in this stamp set that uh, I think that almost makes it a little too much. So I'm only doing the one color in each. Uh, this is soft sea foam, and I'm just going to do these little flowers up here. Uh, trying to shy away from a bright color palette in this one because I'm using the uh, early espresso stock and so I'm just going with a sort of a neutral palette. Those are done. Then we're going to go to Petal Pink for the big flowers and I'm literally just going to go around the outside of these like this. And I'm going to cross over my jar in the middle, it doesn't matter. Some of that's going to be covered by the ribbon. I am just sort of giving myself a boundary around the edges. Like that. And then I am just going to color it in like this. I actually found that by just scribbling and leaving, not worrying about how much I put in, I left a little bit of it white. It actually gives it kind of a bit of a variegation to the color. It looks more like a flower that way. And the last one I'm going to use is Light Pool Party. Pool Party works. Um, I think I also, on the next card, I pulled out uh, Seaside Spray, um, Balmy Blue. Anything works for the water. Uh, but this one I thought, well, let's try this. It's kind of got a, a bit of a greeny color to it and it works well with the brown. So there, we just put some water in our jar. And I am just going to go back over two or three times some of the hash lines that are here, just to give it a little darker 
itch. And I'm just zigzagging across the top here with my water. Okay, there we go. That is that. My blend is out of the way. Now, we are going to put our card together. So, our inside layer is just going to go on with regular liquid glue. Now it has a little 1 8 inch border all the way around the outside. Okay, that's done. Outside, we're going to mount this one with dimensionals. So I use the large dimensionals when I'm doing big pieces like this. I am not stingy with my dimensionals. I do not want my card to cave in in the middle. And so I am covering all the corners, the middle, and I do the middle in between. So there's there's nine on there. Eight, eight dimensionals in total. Dimensionals are like a penny a piece. Uh, we put more expensive ribbon on our cards than we put in dimensionals and people can be a bit stingy with them at times but they do go far. That is just going to go on the front like that. Okay and then I'm going to get up. Oh, look at that. All three colors in one go. Didn't even have to. <laughs> didn't even have to try. Dobs of glue. No, don't stick to me, stick to the curd. There we go, and the gold one. Don't stick to the curd, please. Okay, now I've got glue on me. <laughs> Gotta have something to amuse me today. Rusty little tweezers. <laughs> there we go. Okay, and a brown one. So we got like a, an espresso colored or black colored one that's actually got a little bit of iridescence to it. Got that. Yeah, we need a sentiment tag. And I'm just gonna cut the extra off there. And flag the end. long on that side so I'm just going to take a little bit off and on the back of this one I'm actually going to put little dimensionals like that and that's going to go just over the edge of our jar down here Smile, your friendship is a blessing. I like that very much. And then her ribbon. My little fingers are no good at tying bows, so I'm going to do a fork bow. If you've never done a fork bow, you need to look up videos on how to do fork bows because they are absolutely wonderful. And the hardest part about the whole thing is getting the last little loop through, and that's where tweezers are handy. There we go. Just pull this tight and off it comes and we flip it around. Make our fingers a little tighter. This, where this ribbon is metal it goes flat easy. Okay, and I just have to kind of sort of puff it up again. And I use a blue dot. Actually, I'm going to use my poker to roll my glue dot just a little bit. I don't want them quite that. Oh, there. Okay. <laughs> I'll just stick it 
right there in the middle. And we'll grab a ribbon and stick it right there in the middle. And if you don't have bronze ribbon, uh, you use whatever ribbon you have. Um, I have seen cards done with the twall ribbon, with the polka dotted one, with any bright colors at all. Uh, it all works. Okay, so that's card number one done. And that was just with the stamp set. So you can make really beautiful cards just with the stamp set. So if that's all you've purchased, you can go to it. There's four different floral variations that can go in the top of your jar. You can do your jar, uh, you can flip the jar stamp over and use the backside footprint of it to totally color in with blue or whatever. Uh, you can put the stems or not in it. Um, there's this one that's the water halfway up, or it could be a little half jar, or you could have half the water in the jar. There's lots of combinations. There's a lid if you want to do uh, just a jar, um, I don't know, draw pickles in it, and uh, you can stamp the lid on top of it, or you can stamp the lid on a piece of uh, gray um, paper and uh, just fussy cut it, it's just a rectangle basically, and then stick it on over top of it, and that would give you a, a filled jar. And these are straws, if you wanted to do a drink in your jar with the lid on it and the straw down through, um, you know, you could do a summer scene with a drink. Okay, so that's that first card. Gotta clear things out of the way here, and we're gonna bring in a whack of stuff for the second one. Some additional stamps. We've got lovely lipstick, it's going to be her ink. I've got some of the natural um, linen, linen thread. Uh, this particular one was left over from a paper pumpkin. I have tons of these little spools in a box that uh, are left over from paper pumpkin, and I keep them that way because when I'm traveling or if I'm, you know, moving my craft kit around to the living room or whatever, I may. Um, uh, decide to pull out three or four of these and take them along instead of trying to bring my big spools. Uh, we need the jar. I should show you, this is the card we're going to do. We need the jar, I need the... Is that that? No, that's the sun, this one here. We're going to do the sunflowers. And I've got this uh, sentiment, cherished friend. You are my person, and again, these are both from the mm, Lovely You stamp set. Okay, so we've got those two sentiments. And we've got the card base in Thick Whisper White that is 8.5 by 5.5, <clears throat> scored in the middle at 4 and a quarter, 21.6 centimeters by 14 centimeters. Okay. Um, just going to change it up a little bit here. I'm using the DSP uh, from this set that is flowers for every season. I have to show you this for just a second if you haven't seen it yet. Put your sunglasses on. Um, <laughs> there are some neutral ones in this set. But this paper uses all five of the new in colors. And it does have the new magenta magenta madness so there's the magenta there's the jade there's the bumblebee um the cinnamon cider and the misty moonlight are all in here uh you know these patterns and colors are just amazing um there's something in here for everybody's taste so this is the one i used on this card uh, and I thought, you know, I'm doing sunflowers and things. Uh, let's try something in a different color. And then the back sides are browns, greens, yellows, uh, lots of small patterns, dots and things, even a Christmassy one in there. Okay, so this one, I'm going to use this uh, sort of yellow flowered. Just trying to see if it had an up or a down. I guess it doesn't really matter. They go both ways. Uh, this piece of DSP is cut only an eighth of an inch smaller than the front of the card. So it would be four and an eighth by five and three eighths. 10.5 centimeters by 13.6 centimeters. I just wanted it mostly to cover the front, but I still like that little strip around the edge. 
And then again, we're doing a smaller matte piece on the front. So this is three and a half by four and three quarters, or 8.9 centimeters by 12 centimeters. And that's what we're gonna do our stamping on for the flowers. And then I also have a little scrap here that I'm gonna do the jar on. And this time we're going to introduce the punch. So we're adding DSP, we're using the stamp set, and we're going to add the jar punch that punches out the jar for us, and we're going to bump him up on dimensionals. Okay, so let's waste no more time and get started. We need a memento back again. I want my pad to do my stamping. I'm going to do the jar down towards the bottom because I need to slide this into the punch. And if I did it up at the top, it wouldn't slide far enough into the punch. So there's the jar. And the flowers. I have two, two different stamps mounted on this block. So this is the sunflower arrangement. And I want that about middle top. Yes. I want to get the angle right here. There we go. About a half an inch away from the top. It's a little bit forgiving because the jar is just going to go 3D imposed over top of it. It's not going to matter if I miss by a little. Okay, that's that. Now, we're going to do... Um, I may as well do my other stamping while I'm here. So I've got my lovely lipstick to do the Cherished Friend, which is on the back of this block. I'm just going to peel this one off now so I can see through my block. And I'm going to be fussy cutting that out anyway, so it doesn't matter if it's perfectly straight. Okay, good. Done. And then on the inside, I actually did a little extra strip of DSP on this one, because uh, when you're cutting the stuff up, you always have extra strips left over. So I'm going to put the nor my nor my person it says inside, and we're just going to put that a little to the left, not quite centered. And I will get that other piece out of the package and stick on the inside. Okay, so there, our stamping is all done. All of our inks away. Fold and burnish this. We can stick our DSP, in. wow! <laughs> it takes you by surprise sometimes when you when you first see it. It is really bright paper, and I'll tell you, in small pieces, or, you know, when you layer it up with something else, it really does work. It's really nice. As soon as my package of in-color papers arrive, I will be making more cards with this paper on in-color bases that are going to match it. Today I'm just working with white and neutral colors. Okay. Also pulled out my trio punch because I thought this layer on the front I wanted to show as much of that background color as I could, and I thought it just softened it where the jar has rounded edges. You don't have to round the edges on it if you don't have the trio punch. Don't worry about it. But uh, I had it in my box of punches, and I thought, why not? I'm just going to round the four corners, and that just gives me a slightly softer look there. All right, so we've got our base ready. We've got this. We've got our jar. I'm going to start with the jar. And I'm going to bring in all my blends that I pulled out of the box for this one. And I have my light seaside spray. Oh, I forgot my the plants. Got to have the plants. Where'd my 
Old olive. Gotta have the stems in there. Don't do very good without stems. So this one I am being careful to make sure that I come to the top of the jar because I've only got a little piece of twine over it and twine doesn't cover everything. So I'm coming to the top lip of the jar. This one. Start with the old olive. And again, I'm going to try to find the, <laughs> the stems in the jar. Mostly down at the bottom that you have to worry about where they're thickest. To get up to the top, it's really hard to tell what's a stem and what's not. the old off. Now we're going to go to the seaside spray. And I'm just going to do the water in the jar. flowers. And for the flowers, I'm using a light mango melody to do the sunflowers. And I am just coming in from the points. I don't care if I cross over the middle. The middle is going to have a darker color. And it's all going to blend anyway. Pineapple punch, I find, is too yellow. The pumpkin pie, I find, is too orange. Um, but, again, if you're a blender and you like to, you know, spend hours doing your coloring and your blending, then by all means, use your pineapple, use your pumpkin pie, um, and do some blending. You could even, um, you know, use the light and the dark combos. To give them some depth and some 3D. But, I mean, this, like I said, this stamp is so beautiful on its own. It's so busy. There's such detail in it, in every little bit, that I think you're just wasting time if you're trying to blend all those tiny little leaves and things. Okay, there we go. Sunflowers colored. I'm going to skip over to my soft suede. I'm going to do my nipples soft suede. got the light poppy parade here to do <laughs> the three little berries that are up here in the corner. I've got, um, oh yes, my old olive, I've forgotten, we're going to do some greens here. So there's kind of this thistly thing up here in the corner. on this thistle and the old olive and this actually is a spot where you could use uh, the light and the dark to give these a little bit of a 3D look you can also get the same effect just by going slightly over one edge again and it will darken it a little okay and I'm going to do oh yes wait 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 wait, wait. here's this greenery down here. Five little leaves there. Uh, this thing. Well, 
So you just, you're just going to zigzag up the middle of it. It's impossible to color all the little spots on it. The same with the little leaves at the side. They almost fill in with the ink when you stamp it in the first place. Just go over it with a little bit of color. Uh, light bobby blue for this little flower that's peeking at the corner here. And this little flower down here. That. And then my Highland Heather for the thistle. And then just for fun, Wink of Stella on the thistle. If you've ever been out in the yard and you had those thistly grass things when it's time to mow, they always sparkle. I'm not getting anything out of this as it did. Squeeze here. There we go, that's better. Okay, now we're getting some. And Wink of Stella, because it has alcohol in it, will pick up the alcohol markers and spread them around a little bit and soften them. So there's that. Step one, we're going to punch our jar. In the punch he goes. There's our jar. And I'm going to take some twine. Actually, I think I'm going to put... Where they go? The glue dot. I'm going to put it on the front. Hmm. Just to help me. Because I know when I go to try my, tie my knot, everything's going to fall apart on me. <coughs> Pardon me. So I put a glue dot right in the middle just to help me while I wrap a bunch of this twine back and forth and the jar. There are actually some little grooves in the jar that will let you zigzag back and forth and keep your, keep your twine organized. This is where it gets fun. And you try and tie a knot in all this. Okay, stick that down to the blue dot. It's going to stay, right? It's going to stay. <laughs> ah. Okay, lost one of my loops. Get out of there. There. Tweezers. There. All right. Got my little bow and my twine. Okay. And we're going to put some small dimensionals on the back of the jar. Like that. We're going to put some liquid glue on the back of our mat. Just like that. And then, just to save a little bit of time, I'm not going to make you watch my fussy cut <laughs> this tag, but I would take the scissors and cut all around this. And then uh, I did a couple of little pieces of dimensional 
underneath this end of it. Uh, cut, just cut them in half and then I glued it on on the front. So we'll just pretend that that's, that that's on there and that's that card. Okay. Now let's go to the shaker cards. These are fun. I did two, two different versions of it and uh, tried some different tags and things, some different ribbons, different twines. Uh, this one I did the sunflowers again. This one I actually fussy cut a bunch of sunflowers out. And uh, so we're going to throw a whole lot of stuff <laughs> this one. But some of it I've already prepared. So the little shaker domes come ten in a little box. And they're just like the, uh, the uh, acrylic domes from the snow globe set. Same idea. They have a double stick tape on two sides to make your little shaker dome. So we have one of those. Uh, I got the, these little plastic beads that were for actually putting in jars to stick dried flowers in. Uh, so I'm going to use those. I have no idea where they came from. They were just in a box of craft stuff. I've got some uh, twine that came uh, from Celebration. There was a dual pack of it that had the, uh, the teal color and the yellow color, and it's got a little bit of uh, shimmer to it. So we're going to use that for the bow. We're going to use Native Navy ink. Uh, from the holiday rhinestones, there are some blue rhinestones, so I'm going to throw some blue rhinestones on, like I did here. I put pearls on this one. We have, where are my measurements here? We have a Knight of Navy card base, again, 8.5 by 5.5, 21.6 by 14 centimeters. We have a layer of DSP that's going to go on the front. That is cut a quarter of an inch smaller than that, so it is four by five and a quarter, or 10.2 by 13.4 centimeters. I have another little piece of DSP that I'm going to put at the bottom of this. Um, you'll see on my two different cards, this one just sort of looks like it's floating in space. When I did this one, I thought, yeah, you know, uh, with the tag up here, the flowers up here, it's a little heavy at the top needs something to anchor it and it needs to look like it's sitting on a table or a counter so I just did another little piece to put here on the bottom and that measures four by one and a half or 10.2 by 3.3 .3 centimeters and on our inside we need a regular piece of whisper white for card mat four by five and a quarter 10.2 by 13.4 we're going to stamp a sentiment on that inside. And then I just went to my bin and I found some scraps of paper. Um, we're going to trim these down and we're going to use them with this new six-way punch from the lovely U set to create a little tag to put up in the corner. I'm so in love with that little punch set. It's really neat. Then I pulled out a piece of this sunflower paper from the, the DSP. And I fussy cut a bunch of sunflowers. And I even took some that were uh, on the edge because I'm going to just tuck those in underneath. And I'm going to build myself a bouquet. And we're going to do some of it up on dimensionals. Okay, so I've got four or five pieces of that. I may not use them all, but they're all, all cut and ready to go. So the only stamping on this card is the sentiment outside and the sentiment inside. Okay. We may as well get that part done right now. And because they're sentiments and there's no sentiments in the stamp set, these come from two other stamp sets. And so I have from the fishy one, uh, it's the little things. Make a splash. And then from peaceful moments, these are the moments we look back on with joy. And I'm gonna do those in maybe. maybe. one.
you know what? I've actually got to... This punch works much better if you do your punching first. So, this is the second layer. I need to cut this down to a half an inch. Now, I use my little little paper cutter. Sure, I am. Lost my straight. Uh, that is the half inch mark. Here, no, it's three quarters of an inch. Three quarters of an inch. And with this punch, the little grooves are just almost exactly the measurement. So I'm cutting at three quarters of an inch, but I'm cutting so that I can actually see the whole full line at the three quarters of the inch. And this would be the same whether you're using your little paper trimmer or the big paper trimmer. It doesn't matter. But if it's exactly three quarters of an inch, it will not glide smoothly into the groove. And it'll either go up or down one side. And what will end up happening is when you get to the back of the punch, it's not going to be straight and it's going to get cut crooked. So there's two sides to this and I'm going to do my top layer with the sort of curly curly one. I'm just going to take the end off. Now that I have that, I know where my left edge is, where I can do my sentiment. If I had stamped first, sorry my head's going to be in the way, if I'd stamped first and then slid it in the punch, I would have no idea what this distance here would be. Okay. Now, to do the other side, I know that I am going to take off just a tiny little bit on the end. So you can do one of two things. You can put this on here to mark approximately where you want to cut. Or you could just eyeball it. And then again, I'm going to slide that into my groove and line it up and just take the end off like that. Come out. And there I have that layer of my sentiment tag. Okay. That's all out of the way. Then this one is it an inch? I think it's an inch. So again, I'm going to go my inch line, but I'm going to go short of it. I want to be able to see that full, full line on the marker so that it is going to slide into the groove. Yes, it fits just perfect. And this time I'm going to do the opposite side. So in it goes. It kind of goes down underneath the, the lip. So, there. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to put this on here. Let that little piece go off the end. I'm going to put my little end piece back on. And I'm going to cut there. Let the bit come off. That's going to go back in here. And I know that I'm going to caught on down in there, you. Just barely want to take the end off. There we go. There. So now I have my tag pieces. So there's six different ways that this punches depending upon the thickness that you put it in and you can take the smallest one here and layer it on the next size up there the smallest one there and the medium one there the medium one here and the large one there the medium one here and the large one there or you can layer the small and the medium the medium on the large the small and the medium the medium and the large there's like 16 different ways you can make tags with this punch set is really cool some dimensional on the back of the tag.
There we go. Okay, we got our tag built. We've got all our stamping done. We're going to put our inside mat in the card. I know the anticipation's building. When are we going to do the punch? When are we going to do the shaker card? Get to the shaker card. Get to the good stuff. Nope, making you wait till the end of the video. You have to watch all the way to the end. Haha. -ha. Here's our inside. What started out as a relatively clean and organized <laughs> desk is a disaster at the moment. We've got our tag. Now we're going to build our layer here. So we've got to put glue on our, what I'm calling the table. <laughs> Table's going on the bottom of my front DSP mat. There, okay. And then we come back to our punch. And I'm just going to push it all the way down to the punch so that it's square flat against the bottom. And I'm making sure that I'm leaving roughly the <coughs> same amount on either side. Now, if you want, you could go to one side. I don't know. Let's do that. The tag's going to be over here in the corner. Let's go to one side and make it non-symmetrical. So I'm just going to line it up with my edge. Now I have a really groovy jar <laughs> to use for something else another time. Actually, maybe, maybe, maybe that groovy jar. <laughs> I have to think about this for a minute, how we might put that inside the... The back. I forgot to stamp the stems in this one when I closed it up. Uh, I don't know, flowers inside of a jar? No, I don't think so. We'll, we'll use that for something else. Okay, so we go from uh, the, the back side of this and we're going to put our jar up through. So we peel off, and this is the easiest way to get these off is to take a poker tool and come from the inside and hook it and it'll come right off. Okay, now before we peel the whole thing off, my twine, that's right, I'm just going to fold this back a little and I want to wrap, I want to do this, I want to stick it to the back too. I'm going to take both of them. One from the back and I'm just going to peel the just a little bit. I'm going to use advantage of the fact that there's sticky on both sides of this to help keep my twine attached. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Okay. I'm going to leave myself some to try to tie a bow. And I'm going to stick it down. And I'm going to stick it down in the back. And I'm going to come around here, stick it on the back. And I'm going to stick it down on the front. Cross myself there. See, and I'm always stopping to make sure that I stick it down on the front edge because when I put this in the hole, I don't want my uh, twine tight because it won't won't go in the paper. So I'm making sure to stick it right down to the edges here. And I'm just going to do three three little passes. Bring it up. Same thing again, I'm going to stick it down, and I'm going to cut that off. Okay. Now, I am going to put my release paper back over the back. I'm going to lay this down. I haven't tied my bow yet purposely. I want to make sure all my twine is pressed nice and tight here. I'll pull the rest of that release paper off. I know there's some bad shadows here because my light's coming in from my side window, so I'll try to do this a little sideways here. Pass my twine up through the hole. There we go, so that I don't get it stuck in there. And then I'm going to lower this down over the jar, and it'll pretty much push itself into where it wants to go. And then I'm going to stick her down. Line 
ones come up here in the middle. Okay, all the way around the, the edge. Now I can tie my bow. And I'm also going to, when I come through my loop, if it will let me, <laughs> I'm going to try to loop all my all my twines here in the middle of the front. Well, that's what I that's what I had hoped to do. I'm going to do it before I do the bow. See if I can pull it under with my tweezers, just because that will help to keep these all together in the middle. No, nope. put it too tight. That's okay. Doesn't matter. Tie bow. Not the bow. I wish I could get that fork in there to do this one. My fingers don't do well with tiny dainty little things. Okay. There we go. Not go too crazy here, people. Okay. I am going to get a glue dot and I'm going to roll it all up and I'm going to sneak that in here to stick this gaggle of stuff with the bow together. There! Now it's all staying on the top of my jar and not going off the edges. Okay, there. Now, so, we have that. Now we need to fill it up. So we flip it over. And get rid of these. Don't need these at all. They're just going to get in the way. And they're going to look like they're inside the jar. And we'll just cut those off. Okay. And we're going to put some of the glass beads in. You could use sequins. Uh, they actually have in the catalog uh, a little container of green, white, frosted, clear little beads. Um, I'm not generally critical of things. But I'm not paying nine dollars for a tablespoon of little glass beads when there are tons of other things equally as good you probably have lying around. Um, like I say, sequins work well. Sequins are cheap, and you can put lots of them in there. Okay, we've got that in there. What we need to do is put a backer on it because we're never going to flip this over and get it on the card, and we're never going to figure out <laughs> how to land that on the right space on the card. So we need to close this up. And to close it up, we need a scrap of paper. There we go. So I have a scrap of Whisper White that is almost two inches wide. And I do want to remember to put my stems on this one. I want to go back to my old olive and grab the stems. I know my stems need to come in from the top of my jar, so I'm going to leave them Leave a little margin, because there's a little margin where it's going to glue. Okay, it doesn't have to be exact. Grab my olive olive blend for just a second. And just add a little color to the stem. back. 
I can see where this is because the blends bleed through a little bit. And I can see where I need to cover my jar. And I want to make sure I cover the whole thing. Stick it on there like that. And then I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to press it down nice all around. And then I'm going to go to the back. Slide my scissors under just a little bit. And cut that off. There we go. Okay. Then, lots of glue. You could use tear and tape for this layer. Uh, you could use dimensionals. Um, but in any case, you want to put lots of glue on everything so that it doesn't slide around. And I want lots on the outside edges here. Because I do want that to seal up. There is going to be a little bit of a buckle in the middle where we have all those extra layers and things. The little edge of the, uh, the shaker dome has some thickness around it here and then we added an extra piece of paper in the back to seal it. Don't press too hard or you'll end up making a crease around it and you'll see that crease. But as long as the edges are down, as long as you put lots of glue across the middle part of it too, you can smooth out most of the buckling and it'll be fine. There. So we have our beautiful little, <laughs> with stems in the jar this time, we have our tag. It's going to go up there. Now we just have to build our bouquet. So, you can see, we've got all kinds of pieces here. Some of them, like I say, there were some that were cut off the bottom. That's fine, because they got to go flat against the top of the jar. And this one can probably go right here on this corner. That one maybe I'm going to bump up right in the middle. And this one's going to go over there. Yeah, I like that. Okay. So, glue. This has lots of thickness to it, tons. So I can do lots of layers of dimensionals. So I'm going to do this one first on one layer of dimensionals. This little white flower is actually going to be above that, so I'm only going to put one on that. The other end is going to get double because it's going to be two layers up. So both of those are going to get an extra one. And I took the release paper off because if you try to stick a dimensional to the release paper on the back of the other one, is just going to come apart. So sticky side to sticky side on those. So double dimensionals on one end, single dimensional on the other end. Man, these things are sticky today. There we go. Okay. And then our tag. I think <laughs> this paper was Lemon Lime Twist or something. It was just out of my scrap bin. I wanted something with a nice bright pop of color to 
go against the yellow and I thought the line twist was pretty good and I just happened to have one little scrap of it left. I'll slide my tweezers in between my dimensionals on this tag to press it down because I don't want to press in the middle and squish it. So there we go. Alright, and then we need a couple of rhinestones. And you know what? Big one. There we go. Oh, I love it. All right. So we have uh, actually that's the one I did. <laughs> it doesn't have. Wh where's my pretend sentiment? There's my pretend sentiment that I haven't haven't yet fussy cut. <laughs> it's gonna go on there. <laughs> Put my originals there too, because we are showing some different variations in them, and this one was pretty much the the same identical. So there are our three cards today. Those are my three originals, and those are the three we just did. And I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, please make sure if you're watching this on my YouTube channel that you. Uh, Click subscribe so that you get all my videos and then head on over to stampingjustforfun.ca where if you're watching this video on my blog all of the measurements and everything are there um, and there's uh, a photo gallery with some more projects and whatnot in it and I hope that you will join me there sign up for my newsletter to stay current with me and what's going on and uh, this is part of the June Gentleman Crafters blog hop, so please do take the opportunity. Go down to the bottom of this blog post, and you'll find all the other gentlemen are there. And uh, go off and see what they've done this month. Uh, an exciting announcement. Uh, in July, we will be celebrating two years of the Gentleman Crafters. I've only been with them for a year. Not quite. Uh, but we have three new bloggers joining us for uh, the July blog, and so we'll be growing in our numbers. I think we'll be back up to 10, and hopefully everybody will be able to join us again uh, on that blog. Thanks, guys. Uh, have a great day, and we'll see you next time.